The Milwaukee River Estuary has a special designation from the federal government as an area of concern. Because of the habitat loss and degradation of water quality and really overfishing, it really led to what we call extirpation of the sturgeons. We think they've been gone from the Milwaukee River for about 170 years, which is a long time. And you know, a lot of this is because of the proliferation of dams in the Milwaukee River, especially in the late 1800s, that really blocked the ability of the sturgeon to migrate to spawning habitats and essentially reproduce. The populations in the Great Lakes have been reduced to about 1% of their historic numbers. Since about 1987, the local community has been working to clean up our area of concern. We've been working really hard to you know, improve water quality through improvements to sewage treatment and also point source pollution. And we've also removed 11 dams in the Milwaukee River, um, major dams. Those improvements to water quality and also improving the ability for fish to pass and move upstream to reach spawning habitat. We really are at a point now where we have conditions sufficient for sturgeon because of a lot of incredible work from groups like River Edge Nature Center and WDNR, Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, and we're excited to get this designation removed from Milwaukee hopefully in the next five to eight years. In a year now, they'll be coming back, and because of a lot of the work that's happened to restore Milwaukee's rivers, they'll be able to enjoy our rivers and reach spawning grounds and hopefully, you know, sustain a population. They're very picky, they're very cute, but they're very picky on food. So, um, so first question, we started in 2015 to 17. So to see how can we raise the baby, you know, let them conditioning to adapt to the dry feed later. That's the first simple question, because the baby is very difficult to manage and vulnerable to mortality, to death. Not that, okay, I can handle that. So then how soon we can change it? So there's another question. And then another question we ask is how much we should feed them, right? The fish cannot talk, so we can only have observation, we have to weigh out the growth and the physiology situation. What's the optimum feeding rate or ratio to the fish so we don't waste our feed? and then and make sure the fish have enough food. So then until 2018, 19, so the, the question we want to do is, after uh, they have been fed with the dry feed, are they able to go back to the live food or frozen food? Because the purpose, you're going to stock the fish into the lake, right? So if they cannot handle the legacy over there, they cannot compete with other fish, it means it's, it's not going to help. So in the future, what we like to do is, okay, what happened with the fish? We need to monitor it with this kind of protocol. We raise the fish, if we stock to the lake, are they okay or not? So that's the next step we'd like to answer the question. The stock of sturgeon came to us two years ago now. They're the first stock that we tried to do this with, and we successfully weaned them off of Artemia. And now they are still being fed dry feed uh, instead of krill, and they are continuing to grow. So River Edge and the DNR, they compared their sturgeon growth to our sturgeon growth, and we kind of found that our sturgeon growth on the dry feed uh, could have a better growth rate than the sturgeon on the krill meal. Oh, 
So this year was our first year using uh, a nutritional pellet as part of the sturgeon diet. Typically, uh, we go from brine shrimp to bloodworms to krill. Um, this year, with incorporating that new pellet food, uh, we saw really amazing rates of growth. Today, we'll be releasing a little over 900 lake sturgeon. This year, we actually released about 250 of them early because they grew too well and too big too fast. <laughs> so that uh, guidance from the School of Freshwater Sciences was critical in having a really successful season. This one's in a bucket, so yeah, we'll, we'll hold on and that. You're all good. <laughs> the, the males actually start spawning somewhere between 10 and 15 years, and the females 20 to 25 years. So that's why this is a 25-year project. So every fish has a pit tag in them. There is actually a reader in the, in the bottom of the river in three different places that can actually pick up those numbers. So we can let them know, you know, when their fish was recovered, where it was recovered, you know, what condition it was in and that kind of thing. There's about one out of 50,000 that survive in the wild, where with this project, it's about 20% of these fish will make it to a belt plate. Friends, you want to come down here? Have we done this before? Oh, I got to come here. Here's what we're going to do. Two hands underneath. Reach over. Give it a good wish. Oh, look at you. There you go. And then, oh, great job. So at River Edge, we think a lot about how water really does connect us. Um, these sturgeon are raised up in Sockville, Wisconsin, uh, with Milwaukee River water, the same exact river that flows all the way down into Lake Michigan, where we release them here at Sturgeon Fest. And that's an ideal metaphor for the way that water policy, um, water cleanliness, the ability to have this clean water that we can recreate in, that's healthy for our ecosystems, is really critical, not just for fish, but for everybody who lives along and within the Milwaukee River watershed. You're gonna reach it over and you're gonna say see you later. You want them to come back into the river, right? So I'll make sure you stay in, you make sure the fish gets in. How about we do it on three? Ready? One, two, three. Wow, that's so cool. Away they go. Your, your fish is looking a little dazed after. <laughs> swim, fishy, swim. All right. Research. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God this way.